history of the nunchaku. Practicing the art of nunchaku and other ancient weapons is termed kobudo. The nunchaku are two pieces of wood joined together by a rope or chain. It was devised by the Okinawans centuries ago when the occupying Japanese armies disarmed them. Today, martial artists from around the world enjoy the practice of nunchaku and kobudo as an added dimension to their skills and as an art from the past. The instructor for this video training tape is Fumio Demura, a seventh degree black belt from Japan. Fumio Demura is one of the world's foremost authorities on martial arts and kobudo. His expertise with the nunchaku and other karate weapons is legendary. For the past 25 years, Sensei Demura has lived in United States and travels throughout the world teaching his art. This training tape is prepared so that anyone, a beginner or advanced student, can learn and benefit. This instruction has been presented to you in 10 parts, making it easier for you to follow and to understand, beginning with the stances, the basic grasping of the nunchaku, the postures, warm-ups, which actually can come at the beginning once you've learned, and then strikes following with catching, swinging, locking, the kata, which is self-training, and finally, application against an opponent. Hei Soku Dachi, simply a formal stance for bowing from. Musubi Dachi. Musubi Dachi, also a semi prepared stance, perhaps also to bow from. Soto Hachiji Dachi. Soto Hachiji Dachi, more of a prepared stance. Ti Noji Dachi. Ti Noji Dachi. And now it is getting into actual combat stances. This one is facing an enemy in ready position. In each instance, Sensei Demura will do each from both sides. Zenkutsudachi. Zenkutsudachi is the forward stance. If you have had Karate training, all these stances will become easier to you. But they are prepared in this tape so that even if not, you can learn them. Forward stance has weight over the forward leg. Your body power is going forward with the thrust coming off of your back leg. Keep it firm and against the floor. It's called the Zen Kutsudachi. Kibadachi or Naifanchi Dachi. Kibadachi, and the other word he said was naifanchi dachi. Kibadachi is translated as wooden horse stance, as you can see the similarities to the wooden sawhorse. Naifanchi dachi is from an old master from Okinawa that devised a set of kata, which he called naifanchi. Purpose here is to step sideways for an attack that comes at you from the front, or if the attack is from the side, you also withdraw sideways. Shiko dachi. Shiko Dachi. Similarities to the Kibadachi. It's actually with the tension of your feet slightly different because you allow the toes to go outward, whereas in the Kibadachi, Naifanchi, the toes are more straight, different tension to the legs. Purpose is uh, generally quite a bit alike, perhaps a little more mobile with this stance. Hankoku Dachi. The term for this is also known as back stance. Here your weight is about 60% over your back leg and about 40 over the front leg. It's sitting solid. Keep your body upright. 
and you can actually prepare or fight or defend from that position. It's called the Han Kokutsu Dachi. Kokutsu Dachi. Kokutsu Dachi, another version of the back stance. In this instance, your upper body turns and faces your opponent, although your lower body, your legs turn and going the opposite direction. It's called a kokutsu dachi. They withdraw, but turn and prepare. Not taking sight off opponent. Neko ashi dachi. The cat leg stance. Neko ashi dachi. Weight is about 90% on your back leg, leaving the front leg flexible or free or kicking or maneuvering. Called so because of its appearance to the stance of a cat, it's called Neko Ashidachi. Sagi Ashidachi. Sagi Ashidachi. Drawing or hanging your leg in this manner also known as crane stance because the crane stands that way. Here, some purposes are if something or someone were to swipe at your leg with an object or a stick or even a kick at that forward leg, you pull it back, pull it up out of danger. Kosa dachi. Kosa dachi is cross-legged stance. And these cross-legged stances going either direction your leg steps across the front of the other, and you can have your weight on the back leg or on the forward leg. There are two versions. Nigikata. Basic grasping. Sensei Dembura is going to show us different ways of grabbing or holding the nunchakko single hand on the end, probably the uh, most that you'll use when practicing a nunchuggle. And then there are also two hand grasps. Now in grasping, you have to keep in mind that you may be using it to defend with a block or perhaps a strike. And it depends on the leverage and what action you're going into. Here's the grasp at the center of the nunchuckle and one at the very end. And in fact, the way he's aiming them now, grabbing them on the end, you can use the uh, opposite ends to strike with. Here is like a fending or a parry type of an action. If you were holding a stick or a sword, whether you're doing it with one or both nunchuckles, you can strike with that, you can defend with that. And uh, keep in mind, always keep your hands dry, your nunchuckles dry, you don't want them to slip out of your hand. Here again, holding them on the end, pointing them, or actually hitting with it. This too is, as you'll see in the tape as we go along, it's a defense. So you can either block with that or attack with that movement. Kamae Kata. Sensei Demura, to help your learning with this tape, has combined some of the stances with some of the grasping and he's called this posture. You can study them carefully and see that it can actually be interchangeable, many of the ways of grasping and standing and moving your body. In some of these postures, uh, that one there is an exa example, it can be a defense or preparation to a strike. Here too, pulling it back behind him. If he were to strike, it would be with the forward hand, releasing with the rear hand. Notice that he is interchanging his uh, footwork. This would be a defense, perhaps for an upward uh, block type of a defense against a blow to the head. And there, tension release, grasping under his armpit. So his purpose in this uh, posture section is to show you how you can devise different ways 
of movement, grasping, stances. This one is rather deceptive because there, facing an opponent, holding both ends, you would not know which hand you were going to strike with. It's deceptive. This uh, essentially is the same thing. He's showing us uh, where it is behind him. If he were facing you that way, he could release with either hand and strike. Those were postures. Warm-ups. All martial arts start with a very thorough warm-up. And uh, in the martial arts, in the warm-up, stretching is very, very vital. Stretching and limbering all the muscles of the body. Now, we've added this warm-up here towards uh, this part of the tape simply to get you involved first, show you a little bit of what is uh, happening with the nunchaku, and then bring out the warm-ups. Now, he's also added to this warm-ups that are specialized to the nunchaku, but you'll see as you go along that in your warm-ups, most all the martial arts use pretty much the same kind. You have to work on spine, you have to work on your ligaments, tendons, and your muscles, and the objective is to keep everything stretched and loose. Now we advise you not to star into this real quick, start very slowly. These are black belts demonstrating, and they've done this for a long time. But as a beginner, we tell you to start very, very slowly, experiment, and uh, make sure that you're not going to hurt anything or hurt yourself. If you've had any kind of a back or neck or any injury, ask your doctor first and show him what you would like to do. Make sure that you have his permission. That is, if you've had an injury of some kind. As an example here coming up, he'll show you where you sit on a floor and then stretch forward. Now, all these have been abbreviated because we don't have the time, but uh, you should spend uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, even an hour on stretching. If you have the time, the more time you spend, the better your body will be, the more supple it will be. And suppleness is what we're striving for. If you were sitting on a floor, as we said a moment ago, and you're trying to touch your head down to your knees, well, that one exercise alone could take uh, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. It's something you can't jump into and expect to do immediately. So again, our advice is to proceed slowly and very cautiously, feel your body, feel what you're trying to do. And then as you feel that uh, you're gaining, you can try to stretch further forward, perhaps do it a little longer. But in all instances, start slowly, start carefully. And uh, again, you'll say that the warm-up should come before any kind of physical exercise. A good thorough stretch and warm-up. Very, very important. Sensei Demura will now demonstrate to us some of the ways of striking with the nunchaku. He will repeat most of the technique, giving you a little time to study it. And you can see the correlation between 
some of these movements and the postures and grasping that he demonstrated a little earlier in the tape. Uchiwaza. Uh, techniques of striking with a partner. In this instance, Mr. Demra has used one of his black belts to illustrate to us the points or strike targets on the body. Here, if you will note, he is using the actual string or the chain of the nunchaku to attack with. And it does have a lot of force. Here he's bringing it down on the nose. The nunchaku, along with other martial arts taught to us, are used for self-defense. And we wish to make that point clear that Mr. Demra, in all of his teaching, and all the nunchaku techniques and martial arts that he has learned, has always been for self-defense purposes. So that when you see the technique applied, it's usually as a counter to someone that attacks you. You notice a young man standing in the attack posture. And so we wish to make this point that use the nunchaku and all of your training and abilities as a measure of self-defense. Catching. We cannot uh, overemphasize the importance of catching because that nunchaku builds up s such uh, speed and velocity that learning to catch it is very vital. Here he's demonstrating just slow and easy so that you get used to it. But remember that if you should make a swing at a target that is going with a lot of speed and learning how to catch it without injuring yourself, how to recover it is so important. Mr. Demeter is uh, going to demonstrate to us many different ways and repeat them often so that you can get a good look at it. Notice uh, carefully each time the hand positions. Sometimes he will reverse and turn his hand inward. And uh, remember too that once you swing and catch, you can actually release uh, the one hand that you swing with and use the other hand to strike out with. There's so many variations to this, but the importance is catching and uh, he'll be catching from different angles, different positions, low, high, uh, from behind him, and all that. And it uh, depends on what you're striking at. That's the importance of uh, learning to catch from so many different angles. We recommend, again, you start slow, repeat, and stick to perhaps one uh, type of a catch only until you can do it with uh, fairly uh, fast speed. That one, he has reversed his hand, if you'll notice. Catching this as it comes back over the shoulder. Now, assume there that he's made an overhand strike, as he's doing there, coming down on someone's shoulder, arm, or head. And the point there, you have to have a recovery point. So, catching. Grasping as it's returned is uh, very important. Perhaps one of the harder things that you'll be learning in this new chuckle is once you accelerate your speed, it becomes uh, much harder, but uh, vital, as we say. And 
that instance, he's bouncing it off the body and catching it on the return. The catch there is done by clamping your arm down. Clamping a little bit tight with the arm before you release also creates a more tension effect and uh, the strike itself becomes harder. Now this one high would be if you're swinging the new chapel high to begin with. It's a uh, path of travel is way up above the head or around the head area, so you have to learn to recover from that angle also. There too, take a close look. He could release with either hand, and in that instance, the uh, person on the opposite end who he's defending against would not know which hand he's going to strike with. It could be the left or the right. This diagonal cut, he'll show us in a moment, he'll turn around, show us where you catch it as it comes back over the shoulder. Now again, who you're defending against standing in front of you would not know at that moment which hand the nunchucker would come out with. He could release with his right and actually bring it out with the other hand. Keep in mind that he's doing these slow with not a lot of force and power just to help you to see and learn. But in this case right here, if he were to swing it full force, full power, it would be to hit something in front of him. And of course, harder to uh, catch when you swing it at full speed. Furikata, swinging methods. Mr. Demeter will begin with demonstrating the overhead circle. The swing the nunchaku overhead in a circular whipping motion. Use a strong wrist action and practice swinging in both directions. First in a small, then in larger circles. Keep the rope taut enough to prevent the nunchaku from dropping. This one is overhand. Now you can see the power that you can generate. It's one of the stronger ones of your swings. You may also practice various stances with this so that you can be mobile and be able to move in or out on your target. And the diagonal cut. Now this one can reach target areas anywhere from the head all the way the arm and down to the kneecap. Keep in mind if an opponent has an extended limb, perhaps a fist or a weapon extended towards you, this diagonal cut would be good for that. Wrist taut, swing the body, use the hips, add momentum and force to it. Now here's about a mid-level cut. Now, Mr. Demeter is demonstrating to us that you use the entire swing of the arms and a pivot of the body to add more power to this. The torso of the body would be your best target area for that swing. Now, your figure eights, you swing it in a manner that can catch a target going or re returning. And a figure eight is extremely difficult to guard against. Free Uchi. Swinging with a partner. Here the instructor has one of his black belts standing so that you can uh, get a visual idea of where the nunchaku would land as it uh, strikes out. First one was across the head, and this one coming down. Remember the collarbone also. 
and you can see that uh, anything in its path would be a target all the way down to the knee. The diagonal cut. And here he's demonstrating that on the return swing also. You can hit going and coming back with it. Now this one he illustrated earlier in this uh, instructional tape, and that's the projection is directly out into the body or the face. Notice the way he holds the noon chuckle this time. It's an inverted grip. And uh, you can do almost any of your movements with this, figure eight, cross or diagonal cutting. And as he demonstrates for us, he also shows different recovery methods, uh, most of which we have covered in the strikes and the catching. Controlled swings. In many instances, as you swing out, you have to have a point of recovery for your nunchuckle, and the body can be used for this uh, recovery. We saw earlier where he caught with the hand, and in some instances, you can use your body and your hand catching as a combination. In uh, this case, you'll see him stopping it uh, first across the neck, now the shoulder. Just remember, when you swing forward with it, there is going to be a return. It will come back at you, and you have to have a safe way of recovering without injury to yourself. Now, the best place for the break of the swing, where you actually break the momentum, is right on the string, or the very uh, string or bottom end of the nunchuckle, not the tip not the opposite or tip end. And uh, he's showing us now the correct way, which is hitting right about where the string is. And the incorrect would be hitting too deep in which the nunchuck would come around and hit you. You can cause a lot of injury to yourself this way. So make sure your brake is right on the string and do not allow it to go all the way around to where it would hit you with the tip end of the nunchuck. See, closer to the string, the safer and less injury to yourself. Breaking over the shoulder and on the thigh, inner thigh. Now practice this very carefully. Keep in mind not to allow the end of the nunchaku to hit you. Ukekata are blocking techniques. Mr. Demeter will demonstrate first a high block, then changing hand positions, demonstrate it from the opposite side. Notice the grip or the way he holds it for this second time for the high block. This version is an upward block using both hands in the full extension of your nunchako to stop for an overhand blow. A forearm block, or mid-level, mid-section block, and uh, the same block from the same area of the body, but using both hands and both nunchako. This X block is used for kicks, something traveling at an angle upward towards you. And the final block you'll demonstrate is a downward block. But keep in mind, as we go along, we will demonstrate more of the blocks to you with a partner.
practice them frequently until you become proficient. Kihon no kata, a basic kata or form by Fumio Demura. Kata is learning a variety of techniques in combinations to give you a method of self-practice. You can also devise your own kata or patterns to practice. Goshinjitsu, grabbing techniques. Mr. Demeter is working the wooden nunchaku against the nerve centers at the end of your forearm or on your wrist. This one is simply coming in in a circular motion and breaking free. Now the counter thrusting up into the face. Notice also that he positions his body carefully, pulling back and away into a forward stance. For a lapel grab, using both nunchaku coming down across the nerves of the wrist, pulling your opponent into you, thrusting back up into his throat or into the face. A little twist or a roll will add a bit more pain to the nerve ends of your wrist. And the same counter roll going up into the throat. Now watch this one carefully. He puts the nunchaku over and in, and then a turning motion. He pulls back into a forward stance, gets off to an angle, and counters with a thrust into the face. Now, one arm is thrust downward with the pressure of the nunchaku, and the other one is over and across, pushing with your left hand. This variation of the two-hand lapel grab, he brings both nunchaku up and inside, turning them outward, and again, sliding them down across the forearms. Breaking free, countering this time a variation of using the string for your counterattack, the string portion into the throat or into the nose. And for the bear hug, or grab from behind, brings his arms up and inside, grabs it with his other hand, and applies pressure to the nerve. Inside, grab and pull downward. Very disabling. Follow-ups from there could be additional blows with a noon chuckle. Noon chuckle defense against punches. Here you will be learning 
techniques of defending against a punch, combining all of what you've learned in this tape, the blocks, the stances, various counters. In this instance, blocking by going over the forearm, using the rope part of the nunchaku to simply pull your opponent forward to the ground. It is the pressure of the nunchaku twisted, as you see here, that causes the pain and pull your opponent down. He will repeat that one slower and uh, watch that the block itself is from the outside. The stance differs here, moving to the outside and then looping using again the pressure of the rope against the wrist and a leg sweep to take him down. This begin with an upward block in which you hold the nunchaku taut using the rope again to defend by pushing the punch upward. Then drop under the power, loop it behind the leg, pull him down, and follow up. Nunchaku defense against a knife. The sharp edge of the knife could cut your rope between the nunchaku, so in all instances he is blocking with the wood portion. Shifting or keeping the body out of range of that tip is also important. So the blocking, the shifting, the movement out of range and your counterattacks. He moved to the inside and used a forearm nunchuckle block, counter thrust to the face, and additionally pulling out of range for more counterattacks. The upward block, make sure that your arm is firm so it doesn't collapse and let the knife come down. Pulls back a little bit more and use the length of the nunchaku to make his first counter strike. block in that instance was double nunchaku from the inside. Now notice his left hand after the block, the strike, and now the way he grasps it and counter thrust to the face. This has been a presentation of basic nunchaku technique by Sensei Fumio Demura. To become proficient may require years of diligent practice.
It is also important to check with local, state, and federal authorities to ensure you are not in any violation by possessing or practicing the noon chuckle. Now we will review key points to noon chuckle training. We suggest you first view this tape entirely, then break it down and study it by sections. In this review, we will present a synopsis of all the techniques to make it easier for you to learn and to remember. Warm-ups. It is important to warm up properly before a training session. Proceed slowly and carefully, stretching and limbering the muscles. A good, thorough warm-up will help to prevent injuries. Kata. To help you review the kata, we have presented it from two different angles. Stances. Stances can be compared to the foundation of a house. It is absolutely necessary to build strong and proper stances.
grasping. Grasp firmly. Be sure your palms and the nunchaku are dry to prevent slipping. Correct hand placement is important to ensure the proper execution of the various techniques. Postures. Postures are a combination of stances, positions, and grasping the nunchaku. A correct posture will facilitate your ability to defend or attack. Strikes. There are various parts or surfaces of the nunchaku that make contact with the target. Remember, the string or chain can also be used for striking. Basic catching. In this review, concentrate on the catching hand. Keep the hand open, allow the nunchaku to hit or slap the palm before closing the fingers. The catching hand should remain fairly stationary and not reach out for the nunchaku. Bring the nunchaku to the hand, not the hand to the nunchaku.
swings. The most forceful blows by the nunchaku are generated by the swing. It also gives you reach and distance. Practice against imaginary targets or perhaps targets made of cloth. Blocks. Nunchaku blocks are similar to karate blocks. Practice making your own combinations against punches and weapons. Application. Presented here are only a few examples of self-defense counters with the nunchaku. There are countless techniques possible. We encourage you to use your imagination and develop your own self-defense combinations with the nunchaku. Thank you. 